understanding the genetic makeup of the dog, we have to understand where the dog came from. Which the dog came from a wolf. 98% of its DNA of the dog is shared with the wolf. So when we look at characteristics, we can look at a, a, a chihuahua and say, well, the reason he's doing this might be the same reason that the 140 pound borble is doing that. If the playing field was the same. Usually small dogs have different issues because the genetic breeding of the smaller dog was developed in a way and then people handled those dogs differently. Like a little uh, Pomeranian, a little Yorkies, they're always being held, they're always being coddled, they're always being protected, they're always up higher. People pick them up when they see big dogs. Gives the dog the wrong impression. If I had a, a 90 pound shepherd and always had the dog next to me, I was always hugging it, I always had like a little pink dress on it, <laughs> and I was carried around in my shoulder bag, and then whenever a, a little dog came near and I picked up my 90 pound shepherd and said, oh no, no, don't bite my dog, that 90 pound shepherd would develop the same characteristics that your five pound, 10 pound Pomeranian has. So we instill behaviors into dogs because we can mutate and shape them in each individual dog very simply, right? So the genetic makeup is the same. The dog has this basic drive, survival drive, fight drive, it has a, a, a sexual drive, and, and we're going to talk about all the drives on dogs, which is the section Lewis usually talks about, and I'm glad I'm going to be able to talk about it, because it's the most fascinating thing you'll ever experience about dogs. We'll get, we're going to get into that later today. But the dog still shares 98% of his DNA. That means it's a predator, whether it's a little tiny 5-pound dog or a 195-pound dog, it's a predator. It's not a prey animal. Dogs don't get eaten by other animals, except for other predators. Right? So they see a rabbit, their natural instinct is to chase the rabbit. Right? If I have another animal of prey, a horse doesn't chase a rabbit, right? because they're both prey animals. So the genetic component of that dog is a predator. That's the first thing we have to put into our minds. So five pound predator, 195 pound predator. So Understanding that and their desire to create pack drive or to assimilate into a pack is part of their core genetics. <clears throat> their genetics are also survival drive. So corner that dog, five pounds or 195 pounds, in a corner and he'll probably back down because that's the way we bred dogs, right? We, we kill off, we cull the dogs that have underlying aggression issues. Good breeders do at least. Backyard breeders don't, they sell them. But if that dog thinks it's going to die, if that dog thinks I'm going to kill it, it's going to fight for its life. Right? Even a mouse cornered. Every animal has that basic survival drive. That means I get you in a corner, you might think, oh, sh you know, okay, okay, you know. My first defensive drive is going to be, oh, no, 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 I don't want to fight, I give up. But then if I start going, no, you know, I'm going to kick you. At some point, you're going to go, yeah, boom, and pop me in the nose to see if you can survive. Because if you think I'm going to kill you anyway, you're not just going to go, all right, just here, slip my, slip my throat. You're not gonna do it, right? So that is the genetic makeup of that dog, and that's what you have to look at. When somebody says, oh, the dog's aggressive. Okay, why? <clears throat> Naturally, dogs aren't aggressive. There's something wrong. Aggression is usually something, if we go back to the drive of the, of the, of the wolf, it's a survival drive. He is protecting himself or his pack. That's why he's aggressive. He's not aggressive just if there's no threat, unless it's been mutated into him by a perceived aggression or a perceived threat on his pack or his well-being. So be really aware of that, um, that, and also we're gonna talk about this in body language, that dogs communicate not with words. So you can tell the dog a million times, hey, get out of that corner, don't go over there. Hey, that's, it's, there's a bunch of crap over there, and the dog, gives you one of those, right? Because the dog doesn't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> Bottom line. But if the dog is shown a behavior, I get in his way, I use body language. Body language and energy is how dogs communicate, right? Dogs don't bark at each other to communicate. They bark at each other to piss each other off or whatever. But it's not, ar, 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 ar. Oh, ar, ar, ar. <laughs> right? <clears throat> it's not a communication, right? <clears throat> It's like people that are raised slamming into each other. They're not communicating. And that's kind of what dogs do when they bark. You know? And for the most part, understand that dogs bark because they're afraid. Right? So if you look at a wolf, wolves don't bark. Wolves howl. But 
The dog barking is generally a sign of, hey, 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 get away from me. Hey, hey, he's making himself bigger. He's making himself bigger and bigger and bigger. A really aggressive dog ain't gonna bark. He's gonna stand real still. He's gonna watch, and when he's ready, he's gonna bite. I worry a lot less about dogs that bark than dogs that don't bark. Right? Dog's barking. No, oh, he's telling me. He's afraid. How do I diminish that threat in his mind? I do X, Y, Z. Easy. If a dog's real still and just staring at me, I worry. Right? That glassy-eyed, you know, wall-eyed stare, just staring. Watch that. You know, same thing as a, and that's why you'll see wolves don't make eye contact. They always look away. So people say, oh, I've got a wolf as a pet. I go, oh, really? Go, yeah, he'll just stare at me for hours. He's not a wolf. <laughs> if you've ever seen, you guys have had hybrids, you yeah. know, so they don't look at you. They, they're, they're like so avoiding, they're like, I'm not, I'm not here, I'm not even doing anything. So um, be really aware how that genetic makeup, and when you see a dog go into a feral state, they start to not make eye contact, be very avoidant, very slithery, trying to get away. Those are feral dogs. You know, those are the, that still is, you're going back. So whenever you want to find a problem, just like if you go to a therapist, they go, tell me about your childhood, right? Well, when a dog has a problem, you know, tell me about its evolution. Let's understand what it is about the dog in its core makeup that's affecting its current status, right? It's fear. It's survival drive. It's a predatory mode. You know, why does the dog chase uh, little kids? Well, because it was never taught not to. Dogs that hate children <coughs> are not always dogs that were abused by children. We have to get the shit out of the minds of people. Everybody says, well, when I do this to the dog, the dog just flinches. I know he was beaten. Really? Maybe he never saw that before. Right? The default behavior in a shelter environment is always the dog was abused. Most dogs weren't abused. A lot of dogs were abused, but most dogs weren't abused. You know, if I take my vacuum cleaner out, my dog goes ballistic. He chases it, wants to bite it, barking at it. He's crazy. He's insane. I had him since he was nine weeks old. He's never had a bad experience with a vacuum cleaner. Right? I've never beat him with a vacuum cleaner. I've never sucked his eyeballs out with a vacuum cleaner. I've never done anything. I just vacuum, you know? And I don't vacuum much. I've got a lot of dust in my house because I don't want him to be so upset. So I put him outside and he's at the door just crazy barking and I vacuum really quick. And I put it up and when he comes in, he goes right to the vacuum. He's like, bastard. I know I should have stayed here, right? So, um, what makes a dog act a certain way is usually the dog's exposure to that stimulus, right? If they've seen kids since they were young and they've been around kids and whatever, they can accept it. That's why one thing I always tell people to do, when you get a new dog into your home, put a wire crate in the middle of the room and put the dog in there and let him see everything. Nothing can touch him, he can't touch anything, but he experiences it. And that experience is what makes everything okay. Because if I can experience it safely, then I can kind of be okay with it. But if I'm pressured and it's too close to me and it might touch me and I can run over there and run over there and go over there and chew on this, I might just do that. 